After you've made the diagnosis, after you've mobilized the development aid, after the key concepts of investing in health, in education, or in infrastructure, the real life of implementation of development programs becomes the most important issue. When the Millennium Development Goals were first enunciated, and I was asked and very honored by then UN Secretary General Kofi Annan to uh, advise the UN system on how the MDGs could be achieved, I called on colleagues and professionals from around the world from many different disciplines, from agronomy, from uh, public health, from the education sector, from uh, urban and rural engineering, to suggest the most effective approaches, the new technologies, the best ways to make an advance. That was the UN Millennium Project. Uh, and from 2002 to 2006, it prepared many, many studies, and in 2005 uh, presented a long report and detailed information to the member states of the UN. And in a special session of the General Assembly in the fall of 2005, the UN member states adopted a, a number of ideas of how to proceed in a practical way to achieve and implement the Millennium Development Goals. One of the uh, very lucky things for my colleagues and me was the proposal that would be a good idea to look in detail at a few places, some very, very poor villages around Africa, to see how these recommendations could work on the ground in practice and to use uh, that experience to develop new tools for implementing uh, the uh, fight on poverty to implementing uh, pathways to uh, saving lives through public health to implementing new cutting-edge technologies such as the use of mobile phones or broadband for uh, schools and for health systems and for business development. This is how the Millennium Village Project got started. If you look on this map of Africa, it shows you where the Millennium Villages are located with each of uh, the main village clusters shown on the map. But it also shows you Africa in a bright uh, colored uh, uh, depiction that you haven't seen before, most likely. Because these colors uh, on this map are not of the countries uh, or uh, even of uh, the features of mountains and lakes and so forth as a standard, but rather is a division of Africa into different kinds of farm systems. So the yellow areas uh, along the east coast of Africa, the category shown in Kenya and in Tanzania, Malawi and other places down the uh, east coast of Africa, is the maize production region of sub-Saharan Africa. Or if you look in the Horn of Africa up uh, in northern Ethiopia where the village of Kararo is located, you see a highland area. In fact, in northern Ethiopia, the main staple crop is something basically not known in the rest of the world, a grain called teff, which uh, provides a wonderful uh, bread, traditional in the Ethiopian uh, diet. Uh, but it's a distinct ecological zone because it is a highland zone. Or if you look across the uh, brown shaded areas uh, where uh, you see uh, um, cereal crops are mainly planted in, in dr very dry regions or uh, the uh, area just above that known as the Sahel of Africa uh, and a zone that from a farm system point of view, is called, uh, is called agro-silvo-pastoral. Uh, so there's some uh, bit of crops, uh, there's uh, some uh, tree crops grown, and there's pastoralism. Uh, the goats and the sheep, uh, the camels uh, that are herded in the very dry areas. Well, we wanted to see how the Millennium Development Goals 
could be approached in each of these distinct agroecological zones because each one poses specific challenges. Uh, how to grow crops uh, that are different, how to manage livestock, particularly important in the pastoral regions. The disease burdens are quite different as the climate varies. Uh, in the highlands, uh, maybe malaria isn't so much of a problem, but in the tropical lowlands, malaria can be holoendemic, infecting just about everybody unless it's brought under control. And so the Millennium Village Project uh, identified 10 very poor places with the uh, help of uh, the host governments. Uh, each of these places was at the beginning of this project in 2005, a so-called hunger hotspot. That meant that there was a chronic undernourishment of, of at least 20% of the population, and in many cases, much more. In other words, not only were the villages in poor countries, but they were in the very poor parts of the poor countries. The idea was to apply the Millennium Development Goals as the guiding principle. The core of the project was a holistic approach. Remember that there are eight MDGs. Now applying the MDGs therefore means to design programs that aim to achieve all of those goals, not just a health project or an education project, but to achieve all eight of the Millennium Development Goals. There are two big reasons for that. One is that each of the eight goals is meritorious in its own right. Of course, fighting hunger uh, isn't the end if there's big disease burden or fighting disease and hunger isn't the end if children uh, are not yet uh, going to school and so forth. Each of the eight goals is important in and of its own right. But the goals also are synergistic, helping uh, to uh, provide safe water in a community can not only uh, rid the community of a big uh, part of the disease burden, but can help uh, the children be healthy enough to go to school. And so to help meet the school objective, fighting malaria similarly is not only protecting the lives of the community, but helping to uh, protect the productivity of the community so that uh, people are not sick when it's planting or harvest time, or the children are not so sick that they don't get to school. So not only do we want to achieve the eight millennium goals because they're each important, but by targeting each of them, we actually help to achieve even the others as well. So the Millennium Village Project took a holistic and synergistic approach, aiming at a rather low cost of donor funding. In the first five years, $60 per villager per year to be matched roughly by the host country government and the local community. So a total on the order of about $120 per villager per year to face the whole range of challenges, higher productivity agriculture, uh, making sure that children have classrooms, teachers, school supplies for effective primary education making sure that vaccines and bed nets uh, protect the children from malaria to reduce the burden of childhood disease and to reduce sharply the uh, death rates among young children, ensuring emergency obstetrical care for mothers so that childbirth is safe and even when an emergency occurs, the mother doesn't die of hemorrhaging or uh, uh, a uh, obstructed labor which kills so many uh, mothers uh, if there is no emergency care available. And using new clever ways to meet environmental goals of proper sanitation, safe drinking water, the protection of the local environment. It really is the idea of the differential diagnosis, but not applied to one specific challenge, but rather applied 
across the range of the goals so that all of the goals can be achieved and so that all of the synergies can be harnessed for success. The project is now in its uh, eighth year and what we have seen is that even in the very poorest places it's possible to help mobilize a very active community because across the world uh, mothers and fathers want to ensure the health of their children. They want to ensure, of course, the survival uh, of uh, mothers uh, in pregnancy and in childbirth. They want to reduce disease burdens. Uh, so by harnessing the energies of communities with a little bit of help, with best practices, with new kinds of information systems, tremendous things can be achieved. Have a look at some of the range of activities taking place in the Millennium Villages. In Potu, Senegal, uh, a huge expansion of onion production uh, to serve the national market has uh, helped farm families to raise incomes uh, and to raise living standards to uh, invest in uh, the quality of uh, their housing, uh, for the community to invest in improved health and education, uh, and to upgrade agriculture more generally by introducing irrigation and introducing uh, other uh, parts of a high productivity agricultural system. In Rwanda, uh, with the partnership of government, uh, a village area that was bereft of just about everything uh, and a place that had been a gathering point after the Rwanda genocide where refugees from all over the country came and gathered, but meaning it wasn't a, a, a tight-knit community at the beginning, uh, was able to uh, get uh, power uh, in, into the community, electricity, a, a new road connection, uh, new investments uh, in health and in education, and a tremendous takeoff of business activity. Uh, in uh, Sauri, Kenya, the very first of the Millennium Villages, uh, you see the children uh, on their way to school uh, and a big step up of school programs, uh, including school meal programs uh, throughout uh, the whole community. Uh, in Ambola in Tanzania, uh, you see a new improved uh, water source for safer water supplies for the community. We've seen that that range of activities is feasible. Uh, it was once thought that uh, a poor community might be able to do one or uh, two kinds of things. This is uh, 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 an old-fashioned and poorly thought-out idea. Uh, communities necessarily uh, live uh, holistic lives. Uh, uh, they earn livelihoods uh, or they struggle to do so. Uh, they want their children in school. They need health care both to prevent and to treat illnesses. Uh, every community needs to have uh, water, but if the water is safe, the community stays healthy. And so the idea that communities can improve systems across the board uh, has proven to be a viable uh, and a, a correct assumption uh, every day demonstrated within the Millennium Villages. Uh, and uh, gender equality has uh, manifested itself by women's leadership throughout uh, the uh, villages and by new business development that women have taken on and that have greatly empowered them, given them their own source of income uh, and a tremendous amount of pride. Here you're, you're looking at the Rwanda Women's Cooperative in Mayanji, the Millennium Village uh, in Rwanda, where the women are producing wonderful uh, artisanal goods uh, of uh, weaving uh, and uh, knitting. Uh, these goods uh, have been featured uh, in uh, American stores. They're being uh, marketed online, and uh, the women are as proud as can be in their incomes uh, and uh, stability, ability to uh, care for their uh, children uh, has uh, absolutely soared. One of the most exciting developments in the Millennium Villages has been the development of the community-based health care, and within that, the role of community health workers. A community health worker is a young person, very often a young woman from the community, 
maybe with 10 to 12 years of schooling in total, uh, certainly no medical degree or no nursing degree, but with a bit of training over a few months, uh, a local village worker carrying a backpack with the right kinds of medical supplies can absolutely transform, improve the health of the community, save lives, uh, and help the community to get on its feet. One of the things that a community health worker carries is the combination of uh, goods needed to fight malaria. Uh, in the backpack of a community health worker typically will be three things. First, a rapid diagnostic test, which can diagnose malaria without the need for a microscope and a laboratory at a clinic. Second is a medicine uh, carried uh, in the backpack, available right in the community. Uh, again, the mother doesn't have to carry a very sick and feverish uh, child, uh, uh, febrile child, to a clinic, uh, but rather uh, the community health worker can treat the child at home and very effectively. And third, in the backpack is a mobile phone, which changes everything. If you have to call an ambulance, it's possible now. If uh, you have to call the clinic for advice from the nurse that's on duty or the doctor that's on duty, it's possible. And more and more, these phones are also being programmed with expert systems to plug in a patient's ID number or the results of a test and then receive the information needed automatically by computer expert system that says that Given the test results and given the age and weight of the child, here is the dose of medicine that's needed to address the illness. Absolutely wonderful. And just the beginning of what will be tremendous new IT-enabled public health applications that I believe will provide a kind of leapfrogging to improved health in the communities. I'm happy to say that the Millennium Villages have been an inspiration for many of the host governments to scale up uh, large national programs in malaria control or AIDS treatment or help for smallholder farmers or electrification with off-grid solar-based systems and many, many other innovations that have been tested or demonstrated or pioneered in the Millennium Village. These. Uh, Projects are now spreading. What started as 10 uh, countries uh, is now around uh, 20 that in one way or another are drawing on the Millennium Village model. And within those countries, what started as individual clusters has now often expanded to national application. It's exciting to see on the ground this kind of progress. It's especially thrilling to see what is now possible through improved technologies to make working systems at very low cost for better health, for better education, for access to infrastructure, because we know that if those systems can work effectively, they can be the key to breaking the poverty trap and enabling very, very poor communities to get on a path of self-sustaining economic development.